Hi, how are you? <laughs> Ready? Good morning. We have so many people that are not feeling well. Um, I'm, I didn't know how many people we were going to have here today. So let's keep all of them in prayer. And as we move on this morning, the Lord has a word for rocket walking. That we, that you are more than conquerors. Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for all of us, how will He not also, along with Him, graciously give us all things? Amen? And let's stand and sing to Him who gives us all things.
Good morning. There I am. Good morning. All right. Lots of empty seats this morning. We have a lot of our church family that are out sick for one reason or another. So um, we're definitely going to lift them up in prayer this morning. But we have uh, several announcements. Um, we have our family fun bingo night coming up Friday, January 20th. There is a flyer in your bulletin. Uh, so take a look at that. That looks like it's going to be fun. Light fair refreshments will be served and prizes, fun prizes. We also have a need. Um, they need some people to help with communion, which is once a month, and I believe that's preparing the communion before service. And also, if you are willing to sign up to donate um, altar flowers, um, uh, there's a flyer. Sign up for that. Put your name, hand it in. Uh, let us know. That's something very simple that you can do. That, did you know that when you serve the Lord, it can be in any manner? Uh, the Lord says to give of your first fruits, to give your best. And that can be your time, your money, um, prayer, serving in ministry. You can do that in any way, and this is a great way to do that. Something very simple. And behind the scenes, you don't you can serve, people serve quietly. You don't even know that they're out there serving, and that is a great way to do that. I'm just going down my list here. Okay, the next, I think I've got all the announcements. Oh, hold on, sorry. Uh, okay, announcements. Um, we did the bingo night. Bring a friend. We also have the chili cook-off. That's in February 11th, 5 to 6. Seven. So you sign up, bring your best chili, and we have some good competition. You get to taste them all, and everyone votes. And it's a really fun night of fellowship. And then we also have God's Girl Dinner, Tuesday, January 24th, 6 o'clock, Deli at Pecan Square. And who do they reach out to for that? Joanne. Reach out to Joanne if you're interested in that. Okay. Announcement. And the other, yes. Church Street, yes. Okay, another way to serve. Yes, Kirsten. Any and all help. Somehow this church pulls it together no matter how, who shows up, many or the least, the Lord provides. Our songs, he makes a way no matter what we do, right? Do we believe that? It asks, do you believe? The, the Bible is full of his promises and we have to believe that. Okay, am I missing any other announcements? Okay, I'm so sorry. I just have a quick... Thank you, Pastor Steve and I want to thank everyone who reached out to us over the Christmas holiday just to wish us a Merry Christmas, whether it was through a card, um, through a small gift. We so greatly appreciate that, but most importantly, we, we covet your prayers, um, serving in ministry. That's so important to us that um, you just continue to lift us up. So thank you for that. Okay, so prayer request. I'm going to go down the list that we have. I almost wrote a whole list in Sunday school, so I'm going to hope that I touch on everything here. Um, June Gillespie for a uh, request for a speedy recovery. Um, Miss Kay, as you know, she had a fall. Miss Katie, she had a fall, and she had surgery on Friday, which she's recovering from. Um, Warren and Sandy have upcoming surgeries, correct? Correct. Um, we, Tim has retired. That's a praise and prayer, right? What are you going to do with your time? <laughs> uh, Thomas, we are sending Thomas off today. Uh, he is going off to Boston. 
Um, we'll be praying for him in a second. He's got a semester up there for school that he has uh, continuing education, right? And he's excited about that. Any other prayers? Okay, a pacemaker for Miss Mays. Anyone else? Bob? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, that was on my list from Sunday school. Yes, Bob's brother passed away yesterday. Any other prayer requests? Joanne? Yes. Prayer works. Prayer is powerful, um, and God answers our prayer. Even though we think we're not feeling it or seeing it, God answers our prayer um, in his timing. We have to remember that. Any other prayer requests? Okay. Pastor Steve, did I get everything? Okay. All right, Lord. Gosh. Lord, we just thank you for who you are, the way maker. And yes, we believe, we believe all that your word says, Lord. Father, we have so many people out this morning, whether it's sickness or some type of health, Lord, and they can't be here with us, Lord. And we just ask that you touch them in this moment. Lord, they are our family, and we miss them when they are not here, Lord. This is a tough time of year for a lot of people. A lot of people suffer from depression and anxiety, Lord. And in this moment, we just ask that you um, know that no matter where they are, you are their father, and you seek them. And all they have to do is turn and look to you, Lord. Father, we lift up all these prayers and petitions to us. And I'm sure there are some that are unspoken, Lord. And the wonderful thing about you, Father, is that we don't even need to speak them out loud. And you already know what our need is, Lord. And we just thank you for that. Father, and we go to you this morning to pray the prayer that your son taught, taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Okay, so we have one more thing that we're going to do within the weeks leading up to Christmas. Uh, they, if you um, placed an ornament on the tree in Wesley Fellowship or uh, put an ornament to be placed on the tree, um, what we do now is all those ornaments are on the altar rail. You come up and pick an ornament that was not yours. And the beautiful thing about this is that there is a name on the back of that ornament and you, we would like you to pray for that person throughout this coming year. Isn't that awesome? Who doesn't want some extra prayer? I actually put two ornaments in, one for me and one for my family. So the word says when two or more gather in your name, the Holy Spirit is there. So um, if those uh, people who put in ornaments can come up and pick an ornament that isn't theirs, then we can do that. Good morning. I see there's some uh, ornaments left up here, so we'll see to it that they get taken. Uh, there's probably some folks that aren't here today um, that would have taken them, so we'll, we'll make sure that that happens. Um, second of all, did you see me sitting here? Did anybody hear me playing? I didn't fool nobody. I was rocking back and forth. Never mind, I guess. All right, never mind. Didn't work. You know, Mark trusted me to push the play button, and then I think it went all right. <laughs> uh, real quick, Maureen announced this, silly cook-off. You're not allowed to be there. Uh, uh, somebody hear something? <laughs> silly cook-off, this is very important in, in the church business affairs, man. This is, this, is, this, is, this is where we lay it down right here, okay? And I've been hearing a lot of big games, so we'll see, we'll see. There's a little smack talking going on already. It's all the way out in February. <clears throat> Last time I, I took a little side, well, we won't call it that, will we, in church. I had to buy the pastor lunch. Believe that? She beat me by that much. All right. Two important things. We don't celebrate our wins here. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. I'll say it. Uh, Tim, this is a humble man. 
it, it took everything for me to get him up here. And Thomas, could you come down here? Just for a minute. No, no. Thomas is going away to Boston. Um, he's going off to school, and we need to uh, make sure that we as a church, as his, uh, as his home church, send him off well. Amen? Um, Tim just retired, and we want to pray over Tim also that, just, uh, um, that God just gives him a refreshing moment um, and what he does next, that the Lord just leads him and uh, gives him uh, a time of, uh, uh, to rejuvenate, you know, to just have a great retirement and everything that the Lord has laid out for him, that the Holy Spirit just leads him and guides him. And the same with Thomas. Anyone who feels led to come up and put hands on these two men with me would be more than happy to come up. And we're going to pray over them. Heavenly Father, Lord, you have two servants here, Lord, that just love you with all their heart, Father. And as they move into the next season, Lord, of their lives, of, of education and retirement, Lord, that they can both do your will, Lord, and we know that because of that, your heart just bursts with joy. And we just, Father, we just ask now that you just give them guidance, give them, and let them know that you're going with them um, through the next season, that you will be there with them as you always have been with them, Lord. And we just ask that you watch over them, that you give them guidance, that you give them the strength that they need, and the willpower, Lord. And we just ask that the Holy Spirit indwell their hearts and dwell in their lives and their families, Lord. Um, and we just ask for a leading for them, Lord. We just ask, Father, that you just show them plainly as you just shine a light on the path that you want them to follow, Lord. And we just ask you, Lord, to just comfort them and give them all that they need to do so, Father. And we thank you, Father, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. It's been a little different this morning so far, but I'm feeling it. Y'all feeling it? Feeling it? Oh, when did you sneak in back there? I see you in the back row. <laughs> I was just talking to somebody. You know, I'll call people out, won't I? Doesn't matter. You all were going to start without me. I didn't have my microphone on. The music started playing. I'm walking down the hall. That gets your hustle a little bit. I want to talk about what we sang about this morning. I want to talk about the Lord, no matter what, He makes a way. He's going to make a way for Thomas. He's going to make a way for Tim. He's going to make a way for Rockawalk, and he's going to make a way for all of us because that's what he does. That's one of the easiest things for him to do. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. So quick, let's pray. Lord, as we get into your word, Father, we just ask that you give us the, uh, um, this, the, the ability to see what you want, Lord. We ask for the ability to understand and give us the wisdom to do that, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. How many miracles are in the Bible? Miracles in the Bible go from one end to the other. From the first page to the last page. The first page of Genesis to the very last page of Revelation. All through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, one miracle after another occurs, whether it be from God, whether it be from the Holy Spirit, whether it be from Jesus Christ. The way God uses men, women, children to do his work is incredible. The Bible's full of men performing miracles. Jesus, it's full of women performing miracles. Serving the Lord is a miracle. Being part of his kingdom is a miracle. Everything we do to glorify him is a miracle. So we're going to talk about a few that stand off. Sometimes there's, some, there's so many that we, can, we tend to lose track about 
what is, uh, not so much one miracle is more important than the next, but just there's some that we always talk about, and there's some that we just never come up. So let's talk about a few. When you think about, when you think about these miracles, what do you think? Has anybody thought about the miracle in a long time of Abraham and Sarah? That's a, that's, that's a miracle way back, way back. Genesis 21, 2 says, Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time that God had promised. You know, Abraham was almost 100. Sarah, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was 90. But you know what? <laughs> We're talking about the Lord here. We, we get all with numbers. The Lord doesn't. He, God doesn't see numbers. He sees his people. He sees their heart. He sees their capability. He knows exactly who he's dealing with. 190 mean nothing to God. What seemed utterly impossible at the age of 100 and 90 for Sarah, God blessed the special couple with their son Isaac. And everything began, did it not? Israel began God established a covenant with him, an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. According to the narrative of the book of Genesis, Abraham brought Isaac to Mount Moriah, where he built a, a sacrificial altar to sacrifice Isaac at God's command, a test, a true test of Abraham's faith. Is that a true test? He was going to sacrifice his son. And at the last moment, an angel stopped him in his unwavering belief in God's power and promises were powerfully displayed in the innocence of a boy. And God stepped into the situation and provided an alternate sacrifice. How about manna from heaven? We don't really talk about that, do we? It's just not one of those things that come up very often. Exodus 16, 4 says, Then the Lord said to Moses that I will rain down bread from the heaven to you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them to see whether they will follow my instructions. So, just as the Israelites, just as they felt that they were about to starve to death, the Lord showed them His glory by delivering them in an abundance of manna from the sky that was going to sustain them for the next 40 years. That's amazing. Until they reached the border of Canaan. Manna is from where? Manna is from heaven. Provided by God. God provided this gift to the Israelites during their travels in the desert and He described twice. It was described twice. In different, in different books, Exodus, and then it was described again in the book of uh, Numbers. Okay, I mean, here's one I can blow the dust off of. How about Daniel in the lion's den? When's the last time we talked about that? Daniel 6, 21, 22 says, Daniel answered, May the king live forever. May God sent, uh, my God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, your majesty. As a punishment, and it was a punishment for praying to God, as a punishment for that, King Darius threw Daniel into the lion's den to what was considered certain death. That's like somebody taking you to the zoo and throwing you in and there's lions waiting for you. Certain death. Certain death. Especially a hungry lion. By morning, they were shocked to see that the same Lord that Daniel had prayed to had delivered him from the mouth and the belly of the lions. Not a single scratch. At that moment, they couldn't deny the miracle that they had witnessed and began to proclaim the glory and the majesty of, God, of the God who saved, who saved Dave, or Daniel. Now here's one I like to throw 
you know, curveball. We just got finished celebrating the Immaculate Conception. It should be all fresh in our minds. Matthew 1.18. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Did that miracle lead to anything in particular? The world has never, ever been the same since that miracle. Since that moment that God entrusted Mary and Joseph with the divine conception of Jesus Christ. Never has the world been the same and never will the world ever be the same from today on. Nothing's changed since that very moment. Mary had never seen, known the touch of anyone else, and she welcomed the baby into a difficult circumstance who would become the Savior of the world. Amen? How about Jesus walking on water? We don't talk about that very a lot. We, you know, we talk about turning water into wine. We talk about healings. We talk about get up, grab your mat, and walk. But sometimes Jesus walks on water Matthew 14, 25 through 27. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. It is I. Don't be afraid. Jesus knew his disciples still held even at that time, a doubt. There were doubts in their mind. They had seen this stuff, man, they were, just, they were still trying to pull it together. Some of the things that they witnessed, they were still trying to comprehend. So, in this test of faith, Jesus appeared to them doing what no man had done before. He walked on water. There can be no doubt about that one. Somebody walks on water. As he led his disciples through their doubt and fear, he proved to them that he was truly the Son of God. Who else could walk on water? Now, it's going to lead me to the last, one of the last miracles that I want to talk about. <clears throat> and it's one that probably pops into everybody's mind from time to time. Uh... Well, they usually show that. I don't know. It's not Easter, but you'll know exactly here in a minute. It pops into our mind. How about the parting of the Red Sea? That's a game changer. Christ walking on water, Immaculate Conception, all those things are all game changers. But if you're standing where the Israelites were, oh, that's a game changer. Can you imagine? Take it into your mind and think about that. Can you even imagine? Aside from it being made into various movies, the parting of the Red Sea wasn't just a demonstration of God's power, but it was a demonstration. This is the important part. It was a demonstration of the deliverance of His people. When God said He was going to deliver His people, God was going to deliver his people. And there was no men ever born from the beginning of creation that were going to stop that from happening. When God promises something, he delivers. Deliverance. The definition. Rescue from bondage or danger. The act of delivering someone or something. The state of being delivered, especially liberation or rescue. If you're in the shoes of the Israelites at that time, then you have to take it all into consideration. There was no way that they were going to escape their enemies, not by human standards. On one side, there's, on both sides, there's, there's mountains. There's mountains all around them, right? They got the greatest military that the world had ever seen up to that point behind them. The Egyptian army, 
is looking to absolutely destroy them. In front of them was the Red Sea. So what are they going to do? What are they going to do? But you see, there was somebody bigger than them. There was someone bigger than the Egyptian army that was in charge, that was in control, that was going to take control of the situation. He was the creator of all things. He was Almighty God, and He looked down and He knew. He saw His people. He knew exactly where they were. So did He put them there so that He could show His his power and authority and just command things to happen the way He needed them to happen to deliver His people out of the hands of an impossible situation? Is that possible? I think it is. Because, see, the Israelites, they were in a complete dead end. They had nowhere to go. They had zero chance to survive. Nothing could save them now except for God. When the Israelites, uh, in Exodus 13, 13, 40, it says, when the Israelites felt sure that they would perish, Moses confidently told them in Exodus, that's not the way this is going to go. What he did was he said, do not be afraid. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Before the Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see forevermore. The Lord will fight for you, and he shall hold your peace. What happened next? was nothing short of extraordinary. In Exodus 14, 21, it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. Who's up for a visual? Let's, let's do a visual, shall we? The Lord of hosts will do battle for us. Behold his mighty hand. before them, and he bars our way with fire. Let us go from this place. Men cannot fight against a god. Better to die in battle with a god than live in shame. Praise God and down into it! Spectacular sight. Now, I will say, when I was watching it in my office, it did seem a little shorter than that. But I can tell you, when you see a visual compared to just reading, it changes everything. That is what the Israelites saw. They saw the Red Sea part right in front of them. 
and God gave them away. God supernaturally divided the great body of water. He didn't simply drain the sea. He didn't simply make a bridge. He didn't simply make a boat. No. Exodus 14.22 says that the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and their left. He divided the He divided the Red Sea into two different pieces. And the Israelites passed through on dry land. You know, I don't know about you, but when we surely have a lasting impression, these things, not just on me, but on all the people who have heard the story. We've all, everybody in this church has heard the story of the parting of the Red Sea, of God delivering His people He delivers his people, not just then, that's a big one, but he delivers his people today. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. The deliverance of you, of me, of the world continues today. It has never stopped, ever. It leaves a lasting impression. God didn't just divide the waters but he prepared the way for Israel to become a great nation. And when we follow his leading, he can prepare us, our hearts, our church, our communities, if we do the same thing. Follow his leading. We too could could become the great nation that we once were if we turn to God. So what should this teach us? How should this inspire us? Simple. The parting of the Red Sea shows us that God is a way maker. He makes the way possible. And all we have to do is let Him do it. He waited for Israel to be pinned down to show His glory and His power. What's happening outside this church today and all the churches around the country is there's a lot of people pound, uh, pinned down. And you know what? I think that you can be prepared to see God show His glory. Because He will do it. He is a way maker. When there is no way, God will literally make a way. He will do it. Have that man say it with a blast of his nostril. Nothing to it. He he isn't limited by time. He isn't limited by matter or space. He's limited by nothing but his own will. He is the God of the impossible because he makes impossible things possible. Because that's who he is. And that's exactly what he can do. You know, the God that we know told Abraham... In Genesis 18, 14, he says, is there anything that's too hard for the Lord? So I ask this church right now, is there anything that's too hard for the Lord? No, absolutely not. By knowing these things, by being able to read these things and watch these things, get the visuals, read God's Word, this should help us even trust God and have more faith in Him. We have More to go to than Israelites ever did. Because we have all of God's Word. They were just starting to write the first couple of books. But you know what? God still made a way. And He still makes a way today. So, I'm going to ask now. We already came up once today. Let's do it again. We need to come to the altar, those who feel led, and pray for God to make a way for this country, for His people, for this church, for our congregation. I could keep on going, but we need to pray to the Lord, and we need to ask Him. We need to tell Him, Lord, make a way. Make a way. You may want to come up and pray For someone in your family. For someone you know. To please Lord. Make a way in their heart. That they come to know Christ. Make a way in our community. Make a way for this church to move forward. 
to do things that we thought were impossible, but they're not because God will make a way. Amen? Let's do that. Let's come up and, let's come up and pray. Anybody else feel a little jacked up with the Spirit right now? I'm feeling pretty good. I like it. I like it. Can you feel just knowing that God's presence is here today? His Spirit fills this church today. And He will make a way for this church and anything He sees fit. Amen? And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You, Father, for giving us Your Word, Lord. We thank you for just showing us and teaching us new things all the time, as only you can, Lord. And we thank you for that. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And the church said, if everyone could stand and sing a hymn, standing on the promise of God.
promises of God. We've done a lot this morning. I feel really encouraged, you know. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper, and it's all in his word. He doesn't say it'll be easy. We just need to walk forward in faith, and that's what faith is, going forward really not knowing what we're walking toward. We'll just close with Pastor Steve uh, mentioned this, Exodus 14, 14. This is what he says. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Amen? Amen. So let's close. Father, we just thank you for being able to worship in your house today, Lord. Um, Just the presence of the Holy Spirit was overwhelming this morning, and we thank you. Um, We thank you for your son that sits at your right hand interceding on our behalf, Lord. We just ask that you uh, go with each one of us today as we leave your house, Lord, and we just pray uh, protection over each one of us, Lord. And for those that couldn't be with us here today, we just lift them up specifically for healing, Lord, um, and just let them know that not only you love them, but we love them too, Lord. Father, thank you. We pray all this through your Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.